Sometimes in the shadows of power behind closed doors, decisions are made that change the course of families, legacies and even nations. Today, we're diving deep into one of those stories. A story of hidden wills, mysterious disappearances and allegations that could shake the foundations of the political elite. This revelation isn't just about business. It's about power, family and secrets that have been shielded from the public eye until now. We're talking about Kenya's deputy president, Rigathi Gachagwa. The motion before this great house. His late brother's estate and a damning discovery that could explain why his sons, Keith and Kevin, are now the sole directors of a billion shilling company, Via Pingo Beach Resort Limited. You see, just four months before the 2022 general elections, the company's structure was completely different. The former Nyeri governor, James Nderitu Gachagwa, held 8,994 shares. His daughter Susan held 1,000 shares in trust, while his son Kenneth had five shares, and his brother Rigathi Gachagwa, now deputy president, had one. But somehow, just somehow, after Nderitu's passing, Things began to change, mysteriously. And now, all the children of the late governor, including his son and daughter, have been completely removed as directors of the company. And guess who has replaced them? Only two names remain, Keith and Kevin Gachagwa. Yes, the deputy president's sons. So, the big question here is, why? How did the late governor's children, his direct heirs, get erased from the company's leadership? And why are Rigathi's sons, who seemingly have no claim to this estate, suddenly the only ones in control of this billion shilling empire? Let's break this down, step by step. Before Anderitu's passing, everything seemed in place. He left a will, a will that clearly divided his assets among his family members. Shares were allocated, the estate was balanced, his children had ownership, and the family appeared to be in agreement. But when Rigathi Gachagwa appeared before the National Assembly recently, something had dramatically shifted. Gone were Nderitu's children from the company records. Instead, Rigathi's sons were the ones listed as the only directors. And here's where things start to get really interesting. Even as the estate's executors followed the governor's will, transferring all shares to the estate of Nderitu Gachagwa, Rigathi's sons, Keith and Kevin, somehow slipped in as directors. This is despite the fact that they had no real stake in the estate. It wasn't their inheritance. So why did this happen? What we're seeing here is not just a business transaction. It's a strategic power play. A silent move, buried under legal technicalities, that has raised eyebrows both in the boardroom and now, on the national stage. And it doesn't stop there. Questions are now swirling around why the deputy president didn't mention any of this when defending his family in the National Assembly against accusations that they've been involved in questionable business dealings. He fought hard to defend his wife Dorcas and his sons Keith and Kevin. But when it came to Vipingo Beach Resort, there was no mention of how or why they became directors. Vipingo Beach Resort belongs to the estate of the late James Derito Gachagua. For the benefit of this house and the general public, I have attached a next to this response copy of the official search of Pico Beach Resort Limited, confirming that the hotel is still in the name of my little brother's estate. Is this simply a matter of inheritance, or is there something far more complex happening behind the scenes? You see, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to wealth, family and politics, there are always layers beneath the surface. It's rarely just about money, it's about influence, control and power. The Gachagua family, with billions in assets, suddenly shifting control to just two individuals, something feels off. And it seems some legislators feel the same way. Kimani Ichungwa wasn't holding back. He pointed out that this isn't just a simple estate division. There's a belief, an accusation, that the deputy president could be using his sons as proxies to maintain control of his late brother's estate. Honorable Speaker, we are also told, Honorable Speaker, that this very hard-working young Kenyans, in the names of Keith Ikino Rigathi, 
and Kevin Zashagwerigadi, who are listed on the CR12 of the documents that were tabled this afternoon by Rigadi, are shareholders of Vipingo Beach Resort that owns the Vipingo property in Kilifi County. The one the Honorable Chonga was speaking about. Rigadi Zashagwa told Kenyans on national TV that this property is still owned by the family and therefore is still part of the estate. Keith Ikino and Kevin Gashagua, his sons, were not joint will executors of the estate of Nderito Gashagua. And the owners who are listed on this year 12 is Keith Ikino Rigavi, Kevin Gashagua Rigavi, and the estate of the deceased James Nderito Gashagua. Think about that for a moment. We're not talking about a few shares here. We're talking about a billion shilling estate, real estate, luxurious resorts and apartments. And the only two people left in control are Keith and Kevin Gachagua. But it doesn't end there. The story deepens. Another asset, Olive Garden Hotel, which belonged to the late Anderi to Gachagua, was sold under the terms of the will. But here's where things get murkier. Allegations emerged that the buyer, TM Civil Engineering, was nothing more than a front, a company controlled by a close ally of Rigati Gachagua. Ichungwa claimed that the real owner behind the scenes is the deputy president himself. He went as far as saying that the buyer, Peterson Nyomo Muchira, is frequently seen at Gachagua's office, almost a permanent fixture. It's a classic game of proxies and shadow ownership. What Rigadi Gashagwa was telling you here, on Olive Garden Hotel, he claimed that this hotel was sold by executors to a third party. Honorable Speaker, if you peruse through the documents, Olive Gardens is said to have been sold to one gentleman that many of us know, the Honorable Gishimu Gidenji, the member for Gishugu will tell you that the gentleman who is listed here as a purchaser for value for Olive Gardens, one Peterson Jomo Mushira, was a candidate in Gishugu, Gishugu constituency. He is a direct proxy of one Rigavi Geoffrey Gashagua. I therefore want to tell you Olive Gardens was purchased through the proxy of Peterson Jomo Mushira with zero shares and TM Civil Engineering Limited with 6,000 shares. Those who have visited the Annex House, the Office of the Deputy President, know this Jomo is a permanent fixture in the Office of the Deputy President and therefore his direct proxy. And if these allegations are true, then we're looking at a political figure who has mastered the art of hiding assets behind trusted friends and family. Assets that, by all appearances, were meant for his late brother's heirs. But here's the most important part. With Rigathi Gachagua facing an impeachment motion and over 20 cases at the High Court, this revelation could be a game-changer. As the Senate prepares to vote on his fate, these hidden dealings are no longer a family secret. They're out in the open for all to see. If this new information about his family's involvement in his late brother's estate gains traction, it could severely damage his political career. The impeachment motion combined with these legal battles could lead to a total collapse of his political future. But that's not the only concern. This could spark wider investigations into how estates of deceased politicians have been handled across Kenya. We may see other political families being dragged into the spotlight, questioned about how they manage wealth passed down through generations. And for Gachagua, the political ramifications could extend far beyond the courtroom. If he's seen as using his influence for personal gain, his position in the current administration could become untenable. This scandal has the potential to destabilize not only his role, but also the broader political alliances that have kept him in power. And so the stage is set. A family's fortune, a country's political stability, and a deputy president's future all hang in the balance. Where will the chips fall? Only time will tell. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, what will happen next? Will the deputy president be held accountable? Or will the Gachagua family continue to hold on to their billion-shilling empire behind closed doors? The answers may be closer than we think. I'm Jennifer Harrison, and this is Life Lens TV. Stay with us as we continue to follow this unfolding story. For now, let me say goodbye. See you in the next one, inshallah.